In this video, we'll talk about what Google Docs is, the benefits of using it in your classroom, and some of the ways you can start using it right now. Google Docs is one of the Google Apps or Google applications that you have access to. Google Docs is like a hybrid word processor. You and your students can insert images and link websites to your text, have help citing sources, and use your voice to type. Your students can collaborate in the same doc at the exact same time, and you can see if they're contributing equally. Students can also provide feedback on each other with the commenting feature, and you can even use docs as a sign-up page that you email out to your parents. In this example of a Google Doc, let's pretend that I'm a student and I've typed up the information on this page about which parts of plants that we eat. Now, one of the things about Google Docs is that you can insert images and links into this doc. So let's say I wanna insert an image of one of the plants that I talk about in this piece. In the paragraph about plants that grow above ground, I mentioned that asparagus grows above ground. I'm gonna find a picture of asparagus growing, since I think that some people might not know what that looks like, and I'll insert it right into my text. I'm gonna click next to above ground so that my picture is inserted right here. To insert an image, I'll go up to the image button up on the toolbar and I'll click it. Then I'll click search the web. I'm gonna search for a picture of asparagus growing. So asparagus, I'm gonna type in asparagus crop. I'm gonna scroll down until I see the picture that I want. I'm gonna choose this picture here, so I'm gonna double click on it. I wanna make this picture smaller, so after I've clicked on it, I'm gonna drag these blue squares in. Then I'm gonna click wrap text. That way I can get my picture to be in the place I want it to. So I'm gonna drag my picture to the right and I'm gonna drag it a little more to the right till it's on the outside of the text. And now you can see it just flows a little bit better. The next feature that's really neat with Google Docs is a voice typing. Of course, it's very important for your students to get practice typing, but sometimes you're gonna to wanna to use this tool for some of your students. In order to voice type, you want to scroll down to the place where you want the computer to start typing for you. I'm gonna click underneath eat your veggies, no matter how they grow, the bottom section. This is where I want to start my typing. In order to get my voice typing going, I click on tools at the top and then click on a voice typing. The first time students use voice typing, a box might appear on their screen that asks if it's allowed to use the microphone. You'll just have your students click allow. To start the voice typing, I'll click on the microphone on the left-hand side and I'll just start talking. Kids ages four to 13 should eat between one and a half to two cups of vegetables every day, period. Are you eating enough? Question mark. Click this link to see how you can easily add vegetables into your day with some yummy recipes, period. To stop the typing, I just clicked back on that microphone. You probably noticed that I had to say the punctuation out loud. Your students need to do this, but it's actually great practice, especially if they're not consistently writing with periods yet. This helps them to really think about where the periods have to go. And then you'll notice too that my text turned bold. I can just click and highlight it and then click the B in the toolbar to unbold it. Voice type is not always perfect, so you definitely have to read through it to make sure that it's okay. While I was voice typing, I typed a sentence about adding a link. So another feature of Google Docs is that you can add a link into your work. I have a website open at the top that I want to link to that paragraph. So I'm gonna click on the URL, and then I'm gonna hit Control C for copy. Then I'll click back on my doc, then what I'll do is I'll highlight the whole sentence. After the sentence is highlighted, I'm gonna click the link button up in my toolbar. Now, before I paste it, you can see that they've actually given me a few suggestions of what I might link to. That is fine, and you can actually click this arrow to check out those websites. 
but I have mine already, so I'm gonna click Control V for paste, and then I'll click Apply. Now you can see that this link turned blue, and when you click on it, the link appears below. If you need to edit that link, you can click the pencil. If you wanna get rid of the link completely, you can click this last button, Remove Link. I'm gonna to go to another example of a Google Doc. This Google Doc is all about cenotes. There's a feature in Google Docs called Explore. And if I click on the right-hand side of my screen down in the corner, I'll click on the Explore icon. You can see that they've already recognized that this doc is about cenotes. And if my students wanted to click these links, they could learn more about cenotes to do some research. Or I can even use this search bar to type in my own search. So I'm gonna say cenote information for kids. Then if I click this first link, it'll open up a web page for my students and they can read about cenotes. Now let's say that my students used this exact website for their paper. So if I click back on cenotes at the top, I can actually cite this. So let's say in my second paragraph that this information came from that Kittle website. If I click right before a cenote, and then I hover over this box that I just clicked on, I can click these quotation marks where it says cite as a footnote and watch what happens. A one appears next to A, and then down below, I have the citation right here. That can start to introduce your students to citing sources. Now, Docs is great for increasing collaboration as well. So let's say one of your students wants to share this piece with someone else in their class to get some feedback. That friend who's looking it over can click on where they'd like to leave a comment, and then they can click on the comment button up in the toolbar, and a comment box will appear where they can type in their comment. They can have conversations about the content, asking questions, making connections, and maybe even offering further knowledge about the topic. Your entire class can also be typing in a Google Doc. So I created this Google Doc here just by inserting a table, and then I gave all of my students access to it, and they each were assigned a number. When they found that number, they typed their name in that row, and then one of their goals that they had for themselves that day. And then what we do is we can take a look at this as a class and then check in with ourselves throughout the day. Docs is also great to use with parents. Anytime I wanna send out a sign-up sheet to parents, I always use a collaborative doc. In this example, I created a parent-teacher conference schedule just using a table. I insert all the times that I'm available, and then I just share this link with all of the parents in my class by email, and they come in and type in their child's name in the slot that they want. Now you can create a collaborative doc for getting party supplies and even recruiting volunteers. Now for more information on how to set up collaborative activities, use the commenting feature and share activities with parents, watch the videos in module three. Now these are just a few ways that you can use Google Docs. I bet you're already thinking of some ways that you can use it in your classroom. If you enjoyed this video, please rate us on TPT and if you have any teacher friends that you think would enjoy this course, please let them know where they can find it.